All right, guys. In section 5.3, we're going to talk about how you can transform random variables. What that means is taking a random variable and, and kind of shifting it around. Um, that can either be by adding or subtracting a number. That could be multiplying or dividing by a number. Um, it really just kind of depends on what you're wanting to do. And we'll look at some examples of kind of where we would want to use this um, in some context in just a little bit. Um, but before we do that, let's let's talk about these transformations and kind of what's going to happen when we do one of two things. Let's first talk about what happens when we add or subtract by a constant. So when you add or subtract by a constant, and, and to help visualize, let's take a look at the standard normal distribution that I've graphed um, just above the start of today's notes. If you're going to add or subtract a constant to this distribution, what's going to happen? Let's say you add 2 to the distribution. That means you're taking all of the values in it and you're adding by 2. Well, notice that what's going to happen is you're taking your, your distribution and you're shifting it to the right by 2. In other words, your mean also changes because remember your mean used to be at zero. You're now, your mean is now going to be at two instead. And so what that means is that when you add or subtract by a constant, then your mean, which is your measure of center as well as your other measures of location like mins and maxes and stuff like that, is also going to add or subtract by that constant. In other words, if you take all of your data and add 2 to it, then your mean goes up by 2. Now let's talk about the spread. Notice that when we go from our mean of 0 and our, our center there, and we add 2 to it, notice that the shape and also the spread of our distribution doesn't change. Our data is just as far spread out as it would be if we hadn't moved it. And so the spread is not affected. And what we mean by spread is we really mean the standard deviation. So when you add or subtract a number from your data, then the standard deviation is not affected by it. Now let's go ahead and talk about multiplying. Now dividing, we really don't use as much. I, I suppose you could and it would work the same, um, but let's focus on multiplying by a constant. So when you multiply by a number, two things are gonna happen your data is going to get something that looks more like this. And so what's going to really happen there, let me try that again. Go ahead and circle more of it here. Here we go. So notice that what's going to happen to your data is it's going to actually become more spread apart. And so the spread is going to be affected. You're going to end up multiplying, or I suppose you could still say dividing by that constant. Now the one that's a little bit hard to see is the mean. And, and that's because in this case, the mean was at zero. So when you multiply by zero, it really doesn't change. It stays at zero. But let's say instead your mean was at one. Now when you multiply, what's going to happen is your data is going to become more spread apart. And notice that when I do that, the mean actually does change from being at one to being at three. And so when you multiply, the mean is also going to multiply or divide by whatever that constant is. So to summarize, adding and subtracting only affects the mean, whereas multiply or whereas multi or let's see, adding and subtracting only affects the mean, whereas multiplying and dividing is going to affect both. So let's say you had a transformation that you were going to do. So y is equal to a plus bx was a linear transformation of some random variable x. Then, then when we talk about the mean, like we just got done with, notice that the mean is affected by both. In other words, if your mean is um, the Greek letter mu, you're going to be multiplying that by whatever b is, which was right here, and then adding to it whatever a is right here. Now, standard deviation, we said, was only affected by multiplication. So when you take your standard deviation, which we usually use sigma, then we're only going to do the multiplication by b. We're not going to also do the addition by a. The last thing that we're going to talk about is the shape. Notice that whenever we did our multiplying and dividing, yeah, the, the spread got more spread out, but the shape didn't change. Our normal distribution that we were working with was still a normal distribution. So the shape of the distribution never changes. It does not change 
only the mean and standard deviation do. So let's take a look at this in some context to kind of see how this is going to work. So El Dorado Community College considers a student to be full-time if they are taking between 12 and 15 credit hours. Uh, the number of hours or units, X, that a randomly selected El Dorado Community College full-time student is taking in the fall semester has a distribution that looks like this. Now, shouldn't be too surprising if you're looking at 12 and 15 or the most for those of you heading off to college next year. Uh, typically, classes are three credit hours in length. So someone who's taking 12 credit hours will be taking four classes. 15 credit hours will be five classes. Obviously, probably not as many that are taking six um, classes for 18 credit hours. And then the rest of these are probably classes, people who are taking a class where like it's an hour seminar or, or something like that. So just kind of wanted to break down the data before we use it. So let's calculate and interpret both the mean and our standard deviation for x. As a reminder for how to do that, you're putting all of your units for x into list 1, all of your probabilities into list 2, and you're using one of our stats. If you'd like to see how to do that, the video for 5.2 shows you how. I'm going to go ahead and do that on my own calculator separately, and I will let you do the same. All right, so now that I've got all that data typed in, one of our stats, remember list one and list two, and I'm coming up with the following. Um, I'm coming up with a mean of 14.65, and I'm coming up with a standard deviation. Let me rewrite the mean using the right notation. We use this capital mu, um, and this is of our variable x, so mu with x down here, and then our standard deviation of x is about 2.06. As far as interpreting those, I'm just going to kind of say those out loud. If you want to write them down, feel free. Again, go back to um, 5.1 and 5.2 if you want to see how to do that. Um, but when you interpret the mean, you'd say um, that in a long series of repetitions or in repeated sampling, uh, that we would expect the average number of units being taken by um, a randomly selected student to be about 14.65. So it'll be about 15. Whereas standard deviation, we would say on average, the results would vary by about 2.06 hours from the mean. All right, so now let's look to see how transformations are gonna work. So at El Dorado Community College, the tuition for a full-time student is $50 per unit or per credit hour. So if T is the tuition charge for a randomly selected student, then T would be equal to 50X. So what I've done in this table is I've gone through and I've multiplied all of the X values from the first part by 50. In other words, 12 multiplied by 50 would tell you that a student taking 12 units is going to be charged $600. Whereas 13 would be 650, all the way up to 18 is 900. Now, I suppose what you could do is you could go ahead and do the same thing we did on the first part. Put the first into list one, second into list two, do one of our stats, and there you go. But the easier thing to do is just use transformations. If we've got that t is equal to 50x, then for our mean of t, remember means are affected by multiplication, we would just take 14.65 multiplied by 50, which is $732.50 and 50 cents, which again should be the same as if you did go ahead and put these into list one and list two, you wouldn't even have to change list two, just list one and do one of our stats. You should come up with $732.50. Then for the standard deviation of T, same idea. If we take 2.06, multiply that by 50, we get $102.80. So there would be our standard deviation. Let's do one last transformation here. So in addition to the, into, to the tuition charges, each student is assessed student fees of $100 per semester. So if we're going to let C be the overall cost, then you have to take 100 plus what we just found for tuition in the previous part. So here's the distribution. So again, you can see where all we've done is taken our 600, added 100 in our fees would be 700, and we've done that all the way throughout 
And so again, if you wanted to change list one, keep list two and go ahead and type those in your calculator, hit one of our stats and you're good. But transformations is actually gonna be quite a bit easier. To find the mean of C, we're gonna take our mean of T, which was $732.50 from the last part, and we're just gonna add 100 to it. So that becomes $832.50. Now, for our standard deviation of t, and I wrote mean of c, I guess it is c. Let me get those fixed. So standard deviation of c, here's where we have to be careful. Remember that the standard deviation is only affected by multiplication. It's not affected by addition and subtraction. So we're not going to add 100 to our previous standard deviation. In fact, the standard deviation is going to stay the exact same, and it's going to stay 100 and two dollars and eighty cents. All right, so I think I've got a couple more examples for us to look at, and then we will be good. So in a large intro stats class, distribution of X being the raw scores on a test was approximately normal. That'll probably be a, a, an important part later. Um, so it was approximately normally distributed. It had a mean of 17.2, standard deviation of 3.8. The professor decided to scale those scores by multiplying the raw scores by four and adding 10. We're gonna let the variable y be the scaled score of a randomly selected student from the class, and let's find it, the mean and standard deviation of y. All right, so let's think about y and what, and what we've got going on. So we're taking our numbers, our raw scores, and multiplying by four, so that would be taking four multiplied by x, and then adding 10 to those, so plus 10. Okay, now remember we had our mean for x was given to us as 17.2. Our standard deviation for x was given to us at 3.8. So then if we want to find the mean of y, remember the mean gets affected by both the multiplication and the addition. So we're going to take our mean, which was 17.2, multiply that by 4, and add 10 to it. And when we do that, let's see what we get here. 17.2 multiplied by 4 plus 10 ends up being 78.8 for the new mean. Now, once again, we have to be careful with standard deviation. Standard deviation is only affected by the multiplication of 4. We're not going to add 10 to it. And so if we take 3.8 multiplied by 4, that's 15.2. Let's go ahead and use that now to find a probability. So what is the probability that a randomly selected student has a scaled test score of at least 90? So we want to know what is the probability that their scaled test score, y, is at least 90, so greater than 90. Now remember that this was normally distributed. So if we wanted to think about this in terms of a picture, our mean for our normal distribution is now 78.8. We're using our new mean that we found. We want to know what is the probability that they scored at least 90, so this area right here. In which case, remember to find the probability. We're using normal CDF to find the area under the distribution. Our lower bound is 90. For the upper bound, pick something very, very large. 100 probably is not going to cut it. Um, probably do something like 200 or 1,000 or something a lot bigger, since 100 really isn't that much more than 90. Then we'll go ahead and put in our mean and standard deviations, so 78.8 and 15.2. And then we'll get our approximation. So let's go ahead and do that now. Second VARS to get normal CDF. Lower is 90. Upper is something a lot bigger than 90. Mean is 78.8. Standard deviation is 15.2. And for that area, I'm coming up with 0.2306. If we go out to four decimals. All right, guys, that is it for this section of the notes. In the next section, we will talk about combining random variables. So not just adding or subtracting, or multiplying, dividing numbers from them, but how can we actually add two different variables together and how can we um, add two different standard deviations together? That being said, until next time, guys, have a great rest of your day.